Well, welcome everyone to our event. I'd like to offer a land acknowledgement off, off the top. The National Educational Association of Disabled Students need acknowledges the homelands of the indigenous peoples of this place. We now call Canada and honors the many territorial and region keepers of the tree and unceded territorial lands on which NEED serves as a national human rights organization of people with disabilities working for an inclusive and accessible Canada. Our office in Ottawa is situated on the unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe territory. As a settler on this land, I recognize my privilege and feel humble and honored to live and work in this place. So welcome everyone to our event this afternoon. It's going to be very exciting and very informative. I am Frank Smith, the coordinator of the National Educational Association of Disabled Students. On behalf of the NEEDS team, I welcome you to our educational webinar on virtual accessibility. In our increasingly virtual war world, we all have a role in ensuring access for all and the NEEDS team is ready to help you do your part. Carly Fox, researcher and communications officer will discuss the key elements of accessible graphic design and provide some best practices for posting accessibly on, uh, online. Kalia Petzik Grant, NEEDS website manager, will explore the tech side of NEEDS many websites, there are four of them, and explain all the behind the scenes work required to keep our websites accessible to all. And finally, last but not least, Ellen Bridgman, our IT uh, support um, staff person, guides the audience through creating accessible PDFs and Word documents. So at this time, I'd like to turn the event over to Carly to start. Hello, awesome. I'm just gonna share my screen, classic Zoom, awkward. Okay, perfect. So I promise I'm good at social media. I just have to open this fully. So, and rewind my whole presentation. Here's a cute sneak peek. So hi, welcome everyone. My name is Carly Fox, pronoun she, her, L. We'll get into a bit more about who I am in just a second, but I'm really excited to be sharing a bit about accessible social media with everyone today. I will ask that you hold questions uh, till the end of the event. We did schedule off some time for that, uh, but of course needs DMs, my email always open for any accessibility questions. So with that, uh, I am Carly Fox. I'm needs researcher and communications officer. When I don't wanna say that full title, I just say social media manager. Uh, I am also a disability advocate. I've done a few podcasts, documentaries, speaking engagements, things like that. I'm a second year international development student at the University of Ottawa. And something, it's not a qualification, but I am Gen Z. And something that's really important to keep in mind is that people my age, we've grown up with social media as it's evolved. And I think that's definitely changed how we communicate and how we interact. And I know a lot of older folks, they feel a little discouraged when it comes to social media uh, because they feel a little left behind. So I want to first off, just encourage everyone. Uh, social media is for everyone. It's central to our lives today. So, you know, keep at it. I think we all have a role to play in virtual access for all. So uh, first off, we are going to talk a bit about graphic design because it's used to promote promote events and opportunities, share resources and knowledge and connect communities. Graphics are increasingly used to communicate essential information like COVID health measures. So we have to make sure they're accessible. Disabled people can't be excluded from education, employment, social life, or any other realm. It's, I'll echo it again, but as we use graphics and social media to communicate essential information, any lack of accessibility literally endangers lives. Not to be dramatic, but that's where we're at. So just a few best practices, and I will get to social media, but I know a lot of us are into graphic design, especially in different disability organizations. Uh, so large text, that's super important. For those with low vision, small text is not visible enough to read. Another thing is that we're often designing on a computer or a desktop, but phones are really small. So when you shrink it down, you have to be conscious about how that's going to translate. 
Another thing that's really important is color contrast. So this helps people with low vision or color blindness see what's going on. Uh, poor color contrast or poor color choice makes graphics inaccessible. So using high contrast colors and color blindness graphic checkers are a big help. There's also readable fonts, and this is kind of irking me lately on a personal level. So with graphics, you're always looking for the next big thing, the next trend. And right now, a lot of people are trying to use fonts to be a bit more relatable. And they're using, I'm going to call it like a 70s groovy lava lamp font. And it's inaccessible. It's hard to read. It's hard to process. And so a lot of people are being alienated from it. Uh, and finally, limited text. So social media graphics, again, on a very small screen, we just don't have space for a full media release. Uh, big disclaimer, this doesn't mean don't include information. It just means link to it elsewhere. All right. So I've been looking at the left, left graphic to practice and it's, it's like drilling into my brain. So on the right, uh, I will do a quick image description. So it's a group of three people. Uh, we have a man standing in the middle, an Asian man wearing a jacket. On the left, we have a woman in athleisure with her hair up of mixed race with a prosthetic arm hand on her hip. And then on the right, we have a hijabi woman. Uh, and so the text says seeking panelists and in French, so sorry, French speakers, uh, nous recherchons des panelistes. And so it's very straightforward. It's very clean uh, and it's, pretty accessible. If not, let me know. Um, but so then I made the anti-graphic on the left. Uh, a bit more of an image description. I used some graphics. Um, they are all of white women using, you know, mobility aids or having visible disabilities. And then I copied and pasted our English only media release into that lava lamp font I was talking about. And then I did some kind of like cursive for the title. And it looks awful and it just, it's, so basically it's really hard to process. It's hard to understand what the main message is. Um, and above all, something that I've seen a lot is that a lot of people in their graphics are only showing white people with disabilities or only white people with visible disabilities. And I think, especially with needs and with any organization, we have to be inclusive of who we're representing because we're not all white people with visible disabilities. So keeping that in mind is really important. Now we're at social media. So uh, for many people, social media has become a really large part of their lives, whether that's connecting with others, getting information, or even for their jobs like myself. So organizations, governments, and student groups, we all use social media to communicate with audiences. So how do we make sure we're reaching our entire audience? Sorry, my speech impediment's acting up. I'm just gonna take some water. So this is probably why people are here if they're here for social media, because social media is deeply inaccessible in its current form. There have been like considerable improvements, but there's a long way to go. So alt text is my number one best practice. So alt text summarizes a graphics message without giving excessive detail. Um, and it's, there's this whole debate between alt text and image descriptions. So alt text summarizes the graphic, image descriptions describe the image. And a lot of alt text places, they do have character limits. So when you're, let's say promoting an event, people are there for the event information, the date and time. They don't wanna know the color of someone's shirt. So just keeping that in mind, if you do offer image descriptions, also offering alt text plays into screen reader software and makes it a bit more accessible. Another thing that's really important is closed captions, uh, like we have right now on our Zoom. So this allows for deaf and hard of hearing people or those with processing issues to understand the message being said aloud. It's super easy to do. Instagram stories even has like a built-in widget. So it's really easy to do. It includes a lot more people, really recommend. Uh, external links, this is one of my favorite tips. So Twitter especially has this all text and character limit which means even when we're doing alt text and trying to summarize a graphic, we may not have the space to do it adequately. But that shouldn't mean we're leaving people out. What we need to do is link to full information, media releases, and websites. This is also a really easy way to have information be accessible while making graphics still, you know, like visually appealing. Uh, another thing is plain language. So this means sharing your message straightforward and with concise language. Uh, this means that everyone can understand the message you're sharing. What plain language does not mean 
is infantilizing people. There's this issue with plain language where they assume people don't understand it. So it's important to not infantilize disabled people and treat them like the comprehensive humans they are. Some more best practices is camel case. This one was really cool when I learned about it. So when you use hashtags, you wanna capitalize the first letter of every word so that screen readers can accurately relate your message. Uh, if you don't, it just all becomes one word. And then if it's all caps, they are going to list out every letter. Uh, and then limited emojis, that's a really important part too. So it's about knowing how emojis are read before using them, because a lot of the time, what you think an emoji means is not what it actually means. Also avoid spamming emojis at all costs, because what happens is that someone might have to sit through, you know, emoji with money sign eyes and tongue out like five times and it's exhausting. Uh, a few other things is platform specific text. This is also becoming increasingly more important. So people are trying to stand out on Facebook and Twitter by having bold fonts or fonts copied and pasted from other websites, but it ends up being a screen reader nightmare. So every single letter is read out after stating what font it uses, which is just not very cool at all. And then finally, reposting excessively. Uh, you want to keep track of who does and who doesn't use alt text, all of these best practices, uh, because when you repost inaccessible content, it alienates your audience. You know, uh, especially with needs, people are coming to us for accessible information, for setting these best practices. So when we repost inaccessible information, it's kind of like betraying your audience. So, okay, this is the, I'm not going to say stressful, I'm kind of hyped about it. I'm going to try to make a graphic, upload it, and publish it in under three minutes. So if anyone wants to be in a very cute photo, turn your camera on. Anyone? Anyone? Please? Thank you. Frank, you in? Yes, everyone. Yes. I told you this would feel like Avengers Endgame. Look at everyone. Hello. Oh my gosh. I can't keep my cool. Look at all your faces. Hello. Look at all your face. Sorry, you guys are incredible. Anyways, let's go through this graphic. So I'm going to share my screen. It's going to get a little messy. We're going to go with it. So I took a screenshot, it's very cute by the way. I'm now gonna open Canva and we're gonna make a graphic together. So first off, we're gonna upload the screenshot I just made. Let's see, desktop, there she is. Also, I can't see anyone right now and it feels really alienating. So now I'm here with you emotionally. So I'm gonna drag that photo up on here. Also bandwidth willing, this will happen. Uh, so I do have a pre-made needs brand color kit. So we're gonna go with a dark font. It's just kind of the vibe I've been on lately. And right here you can see the different kind of grids and rulers that Canva is gonna give you. I also have preset uh, needs brand text. I promise this is not an ad. This is not an ad for Canva Pro. Uh, let's say a little type. So as you can see, the black text is not looking very good. Virtual accessibility webinar. So I don't, if you guys can see it, the black text on the dark blue background, it's not looking very good. So what we do is that we get it to a lighter one. So when I use a kind of like blue tinted white, it already pops off the screen. So then we want to make the font a bit larger. Let's go for 40. And then we're just going to align it with the center and then fit the image into the graphic a bit better. And that's how you accessibly design. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to download this graphic real quick, if it'll let me. Download as a PNG and not all 19 pages because we don't have time for that. All right, so now that it's downloaded, what we're gonna do, I'm going to stop sharing this screen so that I can share Needs Twitter and hopefully nothing wildly inappropriate is happening on Twitter. Fingers crossed everyone, please. So now I'm just gonna open up Needs Twitter and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go grab the image we just made. Do not open the Explore page, scary. All right, so what we're gonna do, we are going to go hunt down the graphic I just made <laughs> if it's saved should be over in OneDrive, content. 
It's testing me. How exciting. All right, so what I'm going to do instead, uh, I did just make a graphic if you followed along on our Instagram takeover today. You can see just right here, uh, we already made a graphic for our upcoming needs financial assistance program with Katya Newman. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over into alt text and we're going to include a brief description. So let's say picture of Katya Newman uh, with her arm around her service dog, sitting inside in a hoodie, smiling, text reads. And then the thing is, this is an event uh, graphic. So there's a super long text and I can go over and get it from my OneNote folder, but I don't oh. want to waste your time. So once we have that all text uploaded, Good in yourself. it's saved if someone could grab that mic, please. And then once we have that in, we can include something in the captions. We're gonna... uh, running a bit behind. Uh, Sorry. We could just turn that mic off. Lovely, thank you. So what we can do after this, we can go into the here. And the easiest thing about accessibility is a lot of the time, you don't have to do anything. It's built in. So I can do virtual access for all. And that's a good example of camel case. And then I can say, you know, thank you for attending our webinar. And that's it. That's really it when it comes to posting accessibly. So I will stop now and give some more time to Alan and Aaliyah, uh, but I would love to hear some questions at the end. So Aaliyah, I'll now hand it over to you. Excellent. Oh, that was very informative. I loved it. All righty, let's screen share this. You're muted, Aaliyah. Sorry, Aaliyah, you are unmuted, but we can't hear you. Also, I'd just like to comment that this is a really good reflection of how hard social media and tech is. Like something is always coming up. So we're always figuring things out as we go. How we sound, Analia? Still nothing. Do you wanna hand it over to Alan while you figure it out? Yeah, I'm gonna assume that's a yes. <laughs> Love it. Awesome, Alan, then if you wanna take over and do your presentation. Ah. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I will uh, just start sharing the screen. Uh, give me one moment. Hopefully this is the right one. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. Uh, why? Uh, why can't I see it? Uh, give me one second here. Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties. Give me one second. Oh, good, Alan. We literally threw you in after zero heads up. So again, a really cool thing about social media, virtual anything is that like different features are always changing. So it's really important to have that critical thinking and to have that growth mindset. So that you're always learning and improving on how to get through social media. Uh, if Alan's still figuring things out, if anyone has like a question they want to ask, like we could fit one in now. Okay, I have to hold on. For sure. Just while we're waiting, uh, if anyone has any like questions about platform specific accessibility, I know, especially with Instagram, it's super hard to find alt text. So I'm also down to take questions for that. Anything you guys might have on your minds. Okay, here we go, maybe. Love can it. you, okay, can you see my screen changing now? 
Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, weird. Um, all right. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about document accessibility. Um, so sort of the um, kind of flip side of, of what Carly was talking about a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, kind of a longer form um, things to, to uh, think about in, in that space, as well as kind of walking through um, the best practices, the thoughts around that, um, sort of working on uh, different uh, types of, of documents. Uh, so uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, who I am. Uh, so my name's Alan, obviously. Um, I uh, graduated with a Bachelor of Computer Science uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I worked for Microsoft um, for about almost two years. Um, and I'm now uh, moving out onto my own uh, as a freelancer in, in the accessibility space. Um, so I do websites, I do um, event consulting, I do all kinds of uh, different things. And, and it's still sort of a, a bit of a, a work in progress, all of the different things that I do. So um, definitely if people are interested, um, give me like, uh, feel free to, to contact me in that way. Um, but I guess, like, again, areas that I'm, I'm really interested in is uh, accessibility, obviously. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've been to different conferences. I've been a disability advocate for about, give or take, about 10 years um, doing different things and uh, working in this space, um, as well as sort of uh, doing things for needs uh, as well, um, being, you know, IT support, as, as Frank said, as well as sort of a, a technology evangelist, as what I call it. Um, it's a fancy way of saying, I try to, you know, get people to use different technologies, uh, really integrate technologies into our workflow, make us more efficient, um, all that kind of good stuff. And really, uh, just sort of, you know, uh, strengthen the uh, technology of the um, organization. So uh, what we're going to go through. Uh, first, I'm going to go through a bit of a walkthrough of uh, sort of Word and, and uh, Acrobat, which is a PDF um, for anybody uh, unfamiliar. And then we'll go over some basic fundamentals uh, and you'll kind of see a little bit of crossover of, of what's sort of already been talked about a little bit, but hopefully it will give you a little bit of a, a foundation as well. Uh, this is meant to be kind of really fast, really quick overview. Um, and not to get into the details of things, but just to give you a real good sense of what sort of things you can do as a best practice right away um, and where sort of document accessibility is coming from. And then, you know, if people are interested, I'd, I'd be happy to, to keep going with people if there's specific things, if people have questions, um, that's all good. But again, I only have a, a few minutes, so I really wanted to give just sort of an overview. Um, so uh, going through the walkthrough. So, I'll start with the accessibility checker uh, in Microsoft Word, uh, which I think is probably one of the, the crucial tools that I'll uh, talk about because I think, you know, having an accessibility checker will kind of double check. It's not perfect. Um, don't solely rely on it, but it does give you, you know, kind of a foundation of, of maybe things that you can look at. So I'll, I'll give you a couple different ways to look at it because uh, depending on the platform that you're on, whether you're on Windows or Mac or uh, others, uh, you have to do kind of slightly different, but um, you'll kind of see as we go through that I've, I've tried to do it step by step, as well as sort of having keyboard shortcuts. Um, hopefully we can maybe um, work on, on getting these uh, materials to anybody that is interested in terms of uh, being able to uh, get that information out to you. Uh, so uh, the first way that I'll show is to go through the menu. So go into file, go to info on the side panel, um, then you go and do um, check for issues, and then there's an accessibility checker, um, and you go through that. Um, the other way, and this is sort of more for Mac, but it's also available on Windows, is on the top ribbon or, or the uh, top of sort of Word, you can go into the review tab, and it's one of these uh, buttons at the top here, and it says check accessibility. So once you open that up, it'll open a side panel on the right side of uh, sort of Word, and it will give you a different information about exactly what's uh, going on there. Uh, again, this is just sort of a really rushed uh, sort of overview. So I, I don't really get into what sort of things are, are in there and, and what's um, exactly uh, uh, 
going to be there dep depends a lot on your document, the contents and, and otherwise. So it uh, could be a qu quite a lengthy conversation of just what, what all could be in there and how it does what it, what it does. Um, again, don't solely rely on it, but you know, it is a good tool uh, to kind of initially um, start with. Um, the next thing I, I wanted to talk about is just some good practices in access to sort of that accessibility checker, uh, things to think about and things to use. So the first uh, step is to use these styles at the top uh, when you're working in Word on most platforms. Uh, it has this ability to uh, really give you different um, things. And one of the nice things about this screenshot and, and I can um, maybe show as well live if, if people have, a, have an interest, but it gives you this side panel that's navigation and shows you that there's a structure being built to the document. So if you had to navigate around, um, you know, longer documents, documents that have different sections and headings and um, links uh, between them, it, it gives you that structure and you're able to kind of navigate around. And this does it without having to do uh, any extra work. So really using those styles is really important in terms of accessibility. It allows you to build the structure, which is really important. I'll talk a little bit about that in sort of the fundamental section, but really getting that um, idea of using that is, is important. Um, as well for, for anybody that's interested, because I only learned about this recently and, and I wanna kind of share it if anybody actually uses uh, Word on their phone, uh, it also has styles. Um, so you, it's a little bit more involved um, because it's a phone and, and it only has limited space, but you can go in and, uh, and it does have those styles as well that you can use. And it will, again, build that uh, structure, which is really important for screen readers, as well as sort of any kind of assistive technology will take advantage of, of that structure that you build within a document. And, and that's the way that you really uh, transform uh, the way that a document is read and, and thought about and the way that you go through it. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk a little bit about was alt text. Uh, I, I Carly mentioned it as well as I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, why it's important in, in the fundamentals, but uh, always having alt text on images is, is a good idea um, or you know marking it as decorative as well. But uh, having that sort of uh, ability to know uh, to be able to do that. So um, you can, uh, sorry. Here you can right click on an image and it brings up the menu and then you can select edit alt text. It'll bring up a side panel uh, and you can edit uh, your, salt, your alt text in there or mark it as decorative and, uh, and go through that. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was PDF accessibility because I know a lot of people work with PDFs. Um, PDF accessibility is a, is a huge area of its own. So when you go into, um, uh, before I actually I get into the accessibility of, of PDFs, uh, just to kind of, uh, in case anybody hadn't done it, um, you can select uh, within Word um, to save as a PDF. Uh, so you just use the save as file type and select PDF. Now, uh, it does vary based on what platform you're on. On Windows, um, you'll see this options uh, button. Uh, on Mac, it's a little bit different and I'll get to that in just a moment, but uh, you should click on this options, make sure that this uh, checkbox is checked. Uh, it says uh, to be able to use uh, accessible. It, we were talking about that structure a little bit earlier in terms of the styles. Uh, so this preserves that structure, converts it into the PDF version of that and really keeps it for accessibility and make sure that when, when you get to a PDF that it is kept as accessible. So make sure that that's uh, checked when, when you're saving. Uh, to, to keep it as accessible. So in Mac, um, as opposed to having that options, having to go through that check, uh, you go through, uh, you have this simple radio button, uh, which is just a choice between two things. Um, so you always wanna choose the one that uh, gives you, uh, that preserves that structure um, and it says uh, accessible in it. So uh, that kind of uh, gives you an overview of sort of Word in a very, very quick format. Again, um, you know, I'd be interested if people had specific questions about, you know, what different parts are, or if there's other uh, practices that people have interest in, but um, that kind of gives the, the, the very whirlwind tour of, of it. So the next one I'll go to is Adobe Acrobat. Uh, I don't know if people have access to this. It is a paid product. Um, and the reason I, I'll, I'll um, like there is of course Adobe Reader, which is free. Um, my experience, especially trying to do PDF accessibility is generally it's not 
adequate and it doesn't have the, the level of tooling that Acrobat does. Um, and so it's a lot easier to do uh, PDF accessibility in Acrobat. Uh, again, you can kind of uh, judge that for yourself as well as there, there are other tools that do it, but again, Acrobat has been my best experience. So uh, that's sort of what I'm going through and, and it's um, well uh, documented. So um, within Acrobat itself, it does have sort of a uh, an accessibility section um, on the one side. So you can go through that and there's an accessibility checker, which is great. Um, it's, um, it's good. Uh, again, it should be taken with, with a bit of a, a caution in the sense that it will never replace people. Um, people going through your, your documents is always the, the bar to hit because it's important to really go through that. Um, but that kind of gives you a sense. Uh, so if you go through and, and press that uh, checker, it'll give you lots and lots of options. Um, I'd highly recommend that you just kind of keep it as is because it, it defaults to everything being checked, uh, which is sort of what you probably want to, to kind of get an idea of maybe what sort of issues are there and go through them. Uh, again, the accessibility checker built into Acrobat is really nice. It gives you explanations of different uh, issues if they come up and they're uh, set as failure. Again, you'll have to read through them and, and be careful about exactly all the things that um, it says and kind of be mindful of it and read and really be careful. But uh, yeah, so it brings out this panel on the left that gives you an idea of different issues. Uh, for instance, this document I know is, is accessible. I, I've worked with people on it, but it still says it has issues. Um, that's sort of, again, uh, uh, an idea of, uh, that it, I, those are issues that I've, I've looked into and said, you know, these aren't necessarily uh, issues that are of concern. So you just have to be careful and, and take everything that it says uh, with a grain of salt. But, but again, it's a really good double check. Make sure that you go through it. Uh, so I wanted to go to one other uh, point that's a much, much uh, longer conversation. But of course, most of the uh, sort of PDF accessibility relates to what they call uh, tagging or, or tagged PDFs. So uh, there's this uh, tab, which is the tags tab, which gives you uh, sort of the idea of the tags. And then you'd have to uh, go through and uh, tag everything. Uh, again, that's a much longer conversation. And I think Aliyah will maybe touch a little bit on, on tagging in terms of uh, um, websites, but it's very similar in nature. So uh, it kind of does have a little bit of crossover in, in that respect. But again, it gives you uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, it is there. And uh, if people are interested, I'd be happy to talk about it. Or, you know, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend uh, looking into it a bit if, if people are thinking about uh, trying to make their documents accessible as well from uh, just a purely PDF format. Again, if you start in Word and save it properly, it should do all this kind of work for you. <laughs> Um, so next I'll get into the fundamentals that I was talking a little bit about, uh, sort of themes that came out throughout those two kind of different walkthroughs that I went through and uh, different pieces that you should probably think a little bit about in terms of document accessibility as you're going through. Uh, before I get into the specifics of, of that, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, just a couple of definitions to make um, explanation a little bit easier. Um, first is uh, information, which is, uh, just this idea that you can have data, which is, of course, facts and, and uh, numbers, uh, words, sentences, all that kind of stuff. But until it's contextualized, it's not really information. It's, it's just data. So just that di distinction between just because you have something doesn't mean it's, it's information. So uh, the next one is multimodal, because I'll, I'll use this, uh, which is just the idea of having many different ways of doing things. That uh, comes from multi and, and modal, which is multiple and uh, ways. So multiple ways of doing things. Uh, so uh, getting into some of the, the basic principles, uh, Carly talked probably better than, than I could on this subject, but plain text, or uh, sorry, plain language, uh, in terms of making sure that your documents are written in a way that they're understandable, that they're easy. Thinking about content is really critical and important. Uh, I, I can't express this enough, especially, you know, I worked a lot with a university when, when I was in university on, on say revamping their websites, which was a huge project. And, and most of what they had to do was to rewrite it in plain language. 
Uh, so, so it's a really important thing, especially with documents, uh, keeping it uh, to a level where it makes sense and that it's understandable and easy to read and clear. Um, next hey, is images. Sorry. I'm so sorry to cut you off. We are running short on time. Uh, yeah, uh, I have only two more slides. Like, um, awesome. If you Get give it. me like, Get it, Alan. Yeah. yeah. So um, images, uh, so alt text. Uh, so make sure that you um, give alt text to images uh, and do it multimodal, which is that whole idea of doing it multiple ways. And then uh, the last thing is structure and semantics, which is that whole idea of tagging. Um, again, Aaliyah will probably touch a lot on that. But uh, that's sort of the initial set. So I will uh, then hand it off to Aaliyah. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. You sound okay. Great. Okay. I'm going to present on a PDF, ironically, <laughs> funny enough, because PowerPoint keeps muting me when I switch over there. So, all right. Aliyah, I think you're cursed. You muted your, there you go. Aliyah, PowerPoint muted you again, I think. Yeah. We're going through it. Stop the share. Um, hmm. Can someone else do your presentation? Share your- I'm thinking- I can send it to Carly to share and I can talk over it because I don't know when I even go onto PD any other screen other than this I'm being muted. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Well, while we figure this out, Alan, if you have any like last thoughts on your presentation, I know I cut you off. I would love to hear a bit more about accessibility on PDFs. Uh, no, I think I think I kind of covered uh, a lot of it. I'd be interested in what people had to to ask in terms of questions later on, but uh, but actually I, I got through all the stuff I wanted to. So I'm now sorry. I feel a lot less guilty for cutting you off. Cute. Okay. All right. Here, I'm gonna send this to you. Love it. And I know we got a question about all text on Instagram. Instagram's the worst for accessibility so far. So how to find all text on Instagram for those not reading the chat. You want to upload the photo. And then as it says, right before you send it, you can go into advanced settings and then all text. And that is how you do all text on Instagram. All right. Would love to know. Include all text. Ooh, the Meta's business suite planner. It is, me and Facebook are having a few issues. Please don't take this off YouTube when we upload it. Um, what I do, <laughs> thank you for laughing. Um, I will say what I do is that if, you know, the business suite's giving you a hard time, you can upload it and then go through the regular feed and then just click edit photo and you can edit all text within there, if that makes sense. Let's try this. <sighs> it says it's working. I sorry, you muted yourself on Zoom again. And you're muted again. Guys, I think we're cursed. Thank you, you everyone, for your patience. I think we're cursed. Carly, do you have the presentation? I do not. Right, here, I'll send that to you. If yeah, someone that. made someone angry who has magical powers, please apologize to them. We are cursed. I do that. Yeah, right? I, think that, I think that if Carly has it, she can share the presentation while you're going through it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna send it just to Carly. Yeah, I would say, Sue, for um, accessibility on Facebook especially, uh, it's weird. You want to go into edit photo, and it lets you do alt text there. 
Uh, just thinking about it, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all have different ways to do alt text, which is a nightmare. So it's worth playing around in each of the platforms to figure out how to best do it. I sent you the PowerPoint. Cute, love it. All right, and sharing now. All right. And all right, screen share. All right, and and you can hear me. It's good. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So the first slide. So this is so finally. Thank you for bearing with me, everyone. So this is a slide this is a slideshow about website accessibility the basics when i originally made this it was 70 slides long because they got really excited and we can't do that because we have not enough time and um my name is leah pitzak grant i'm the website manager for needs i have a background in human computer interactions i studied psychology where i focused on basically how people um, interact with assistive technology and computers and also degree in cognitive science where i further studied um, how uh, computer science and how people interact and view um, computers. So slide number two. So these are needs um, for websites. We have um, disabilityawards.ca. We have uh, disability rights online, um, breaking it down, and then needs.ca. And websites are a collection of content under a domain name. Um, a website can be whatever you want it, want it to be. It can be informational, sales oriented, entertainment, and educational. Our, our websites fall under the informational, educational. And a website is a platform used for an individual or a business to express ourselves. So it's kind of how it needs as an organization, we express ourselves through our websites. Uh, next slide, please. And so what is website accessibility? Um, so it focuses on designing and developing websites that are more accessible for people with disabilities and also considers mobile and those who have poor internet connection as well. So it's ease of use for, for everyone regardless of their, of their situation. And it means that um, websites have the applied accessibility principles that can provide accessible content. And I will go over those principles a bit later in the presentation. Next slide, please. So why create accessible um, content? because it's a great thing to do. It's an excellent practice, but um, you wanna create accessible um, content because it improves the lives of people with um, disabilities and the use for everyone, as I mentioned earlier. So it's a human-centered motivations, um, attract a wider audience or customer base. So marketing and brand recogni recognition, the global website is mostly as a marketing tool. You want people to come visit your website. So you wanna attract a wider audience and have people leaving with a positive experience that so they can access it, use it and enjoy it. And it does what it intends to do. And also it's adhering to the law and avoids negative publicity. And you, you want to have positive public relations and you don't want people being upset when they leave your site. Next slide, please. So website accessibility is important. I cannot stress this enough. Um, um, a disability should not prevent a person from using a website and a website should not present any challenges for anyone to use. It should be simple, straightforward and follow a logical formula. Like you shouldn't have the home, home button in the middle and just random pictures and GIFs and have all kinds of crazy color contrast going on. You want it to be simple and easy to use. Most of the best websites are very simple. Um, having an accessible website means all users, particularly those with disabilities, Will have an equitable experience and be able to easily complete the tasks and, ac and access the information they need. And it is the responsibility of the designers and developers alike to create these digital products with all potential users in mind. Next slide, please. All right, so web contact accessib accessibility guidelines, the WCAG. So this is a website, well, I'll talk about it later. It's on the W we see where all the accessible, accessibility standards online can be found. And these are guidelines that are updated whenever new information is made available. And the most up-to-date um, guidelines can be found on their website, the W3C, World Wide Web 
consortium website and everything you need to know about website accessibility, security, just anything you want to know about websites is on there. Even they even have coding courses and webinars, all the great stuff on that site. That's what I use. And they have a checklist as well, which is very helpful to make sure your, your website is accessible as possible. And also that you're keeping up to date because technology is always changing. And the W3C focuses on making the, the internet and other digital products as accessible as possible to everyone. Next slide. So um, the Web Accessibility Initiative, the, the WAI, um, developed standards and support materials to help you understand impairment and, and disability. And anyone can use these resources. And it, it can be applied to websites, app, other digital creations and it creates a more usable and accessible environment for everyone. So kind of a bit of a pun. So you kind of want to create a poor website. So that means your website is perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. A poor website is an accessible website. <laughs> Next slide. So perceivable, so perceiving is how we come to understand the world through our senses. Um, presentable to the user in a way where, that they can discern um, regardless of which senses they they do or do not have use of. Um, the, main, the main content of a message has to be separate from how it is styled so it can be perceived by its users who may have a, a limited or no use of one of their senses. So example, screen reader, large font, color contrast, etc. And um, so videos on your website must have captions for deaf or hard of hearing users. It's also just nice for people to follow along. Um, audio files must have transcripts for, for, for deaf or hard of hearing users. Also just useful for if someone's speaking fast or you have a hard time understanding, it's nice to be able to follow along with captions. Images must have alt text uh, describing the image for visually impaired users. And text must be added to the page via HTML rather than CSS to, so it can be read in different styles. So if the styling is turned off completely. Next slide. So the site must be operable. So this is, um, you can use it. This means the user um, interface and navigation components of your website need to be used by everyone, including people who do not navigate using a keyboard and mouse. So you have access key and toggle on the right hand side, there is an image of, oh, perfect, of um, the accessibility feature. So you can use the alt keys and toggle to view the website. Uh, next slide. So, so a website has multiple ways to, to interact. Um, the user has control over limits and timing and clear instructions and recovery options can be um, controlled regardless of ability. Next slide, please. Sorry, I'm going a little fast. So I just want to make sure we get to the question here. I'll slow down a little bit. It's almost done. Um, so your website must be understandable. Um, Alan and Carly touched on this. Um, an understandable website is one in which both, with both of the information presented and the way a website functions is clear to all users. This means regardless of ability, people must be able to understand not only the information in your web content, but also how to navigate the, the site and find the information they want and how to use any tools that are built into the website. Next slide. So language. Um, so appropriately targeted language and typically and reading level. So typically an eighth or ninth grade level of writing for the ninth grade, um, ninth grade reading level for the general public. I think Alan touched on this. You don't want to have a lot of like really like, like academic, like just jargon and big words and just too kind of condensed in text. You want something that anyone can read and most of the population reads at a grade eight or nine level. So that's a good rule of thumb. You want your, your um, cousin in grade eight to be able to understand the, the website. And also um, information can be found in both official languages. So for Canada, that's both English and French. So it's accessible to people who, who may, French may be their the only language they speak and it's one of our official languages, so we need to respect that. Uh, next slide, please. So um, representation of information. 
So that's the R in our for acronym. So um, the summaries or excerpts before long articles. So it's good to have, let people know what they're about to read. You just don't want to have a bunch of text. It's good to have titles and headings so people know what they're about to, to get into when they're, especially if they're using a screen reader, it's very important to have titles and headings and have your site organized in a way where people don't feel like they're trapped inside the site. Um, written descriptions for information contained in charts and graphics, um, transcripts of audio or videos and audio files allowing people to, to listen to the pages instead of reading them. So a speech to text compatibility. Next slide. And uh, functionality um, to consist Consistent font style. So Carly touched on this. You want the same family. Um, you want good color contrast, sizing across all um, across all pages of the site. You need to have consistency. You just can't use all kinds of crazy fonts and different colors. It needs to have a nice theme so it flows well and isn't hard on the eyes and just overall makes sense. And a well thought out and easy to use navigation. So you want to keep the site as simple as possible and clear instructions on forms and visible. Um, labels and um, tool tips or getting started guides for special features. So if you have a special feature on your site, it's good to have an accessibility page where you can go further into that. Next slide. And finally, the R in our poor act uh, acronym, robust. A website needs to be robust enough that it supports and can be accessed on a variety of devices, including assistive technologies. Uh, next slide. So to be robust, it, um, it will be functional across current and as much as possible future operating systems and browsers. Um, support some outdated operating systems and browser versions uh, as um, elderly people and people with disabilities are less likely to be running the most up-to-date versions of their browsers and operating systems and invalidate against technical standards for any ap applicable platforms. And next, and I'm just going to end this with a lovely quote about online accessibility. Uh, the the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. Tim Berners Lee, the W3C director and inventor of the World Wide Web. And then I have my resources. And unfortunately, I don't think I have enough time. I was going to go over making an accessible web page, but next time. <laughs> We did it. We did it. We were cursed, but we did it. Thank you all for your patience with tech. I said this would be like Avengers Endgame before we started, and honestly, it was. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Guys, I need to do like the shameless needs promos because I know we are. I'll do our promos, then we'll do a Q&A because I'm not letting anyone leave without knowing about our social media. It's not a threat. That's a promise. Okay. So uh, we do have an event feedback form, which is pretty exciting. I would recommend everyone fill it out if you have the time. I know you all get a billion survey requests though. So like, if, you, if you're feeling it, please do. If you are tired, it's okay. Yes, okay. Zoom has let me put in the link. It's a very joyous day. So we do, our next event is the Needs Financial Assistance Program Info Session, April 29th at 12 p.m. EDT. Pretty exciting. We do have a lot of financial resources going on right now. So I highly recommend everyone check that out. Uh, we are also accepting applications for those programs. I'll drop links in the little chat box. I'll drop our contact information and our social media. Uh, so you can you know, hold me accountable to keep needs social media accessible, check out our websites. Uh, because a great way to learn about social media accessibility is learning from people doing the best practices. So with that, thank you everyone so much for coming. And I will now open the floor to a Q&A. Uh, you can feel free to like raise your hand. Rosie, hit it. That was really, really helpful. Um, I, okay, so <laughs> I'm a recent, I went back to school. I'm a recent grad of social work. and last week actually and I want to create my own business and so I've been looking into um providers so like things like websites and email clients and all that stuff and I don't know if this is the place for it because of time but I'd love to know at some point your thoughts on like where to get that accessibly and not for somebody who's not super tech savvy so just just if ever that's a possibility if not that's totally fine 
Aaliyah, your website-y, any thoughts? Yeah, yeah I'm just, um, so like at the, so the website, like domain, like, like, like who you want to host to your website or the accessibility features, like what platform you should use. Right. So like a lot of, I think, uh, kind of solopreneurs, I've, I've heard of like ClickFunnels, I've heard of like um, Squarespace, Squarespace, I think it's called, a lot of like Kajabi, but like Kajabi yeah. and ClickFunnels, for example, I know are not yeah. like um, the little menu, the hamburger is not accessible. Yeah. So I don't want to invest yeah. in something that's not accessible. Yeah. Every, um, every single one has their pros and cons. Um, our needs website, we use WordPress. And you have to add plugins. It depends on how much you're willing to pay for some accessibility features. You have to, some of it's paid plugins, some of it, because if you don't have a background in coding, you have to get a lot of the stuff you can't make it yourself. You might have to go and buy a link or find this or that, but it's good to do your research. And maybe you don't like WordPress. Maybe, maybe um, I definitely don't recommend Squarespace because that's a bit of a kind of WordPress for people who code. But I, I would look into, you can also like sample them and try them out, but it's all based on personal preference. So I can't, I'd say WordPress, but maybe you like one of the other ones better, but I'm kind of biased because I learned when I, from my professors and also some of the, oh, WordPress. So that's what I use. So find one that you think you would be mm -hmm. comfortable with and then go, go from there. Love it. Nice. And also for questions, feel free to like drop it in the comments, send it to me if you don't want your name read, etc, etc. Yeah, I just wanted to add one one thing to what Aaliyah was saying in terms of again, like, I, um, each one has pros and cons. Yeah. Um, some things to think about in terms of because I know you're mentioning like email, for instance. Um, so again, a lot of um, uh, commercial email stuff uh, lets you do HTML. Um, again, there are best practices around how to do uh, proper HTML emails, um, as well as like if you have Microsoft Outlook, it does have an accessibility checker um, similar to Word and and out and. Um, uh, PowerPoint and some of the other ones. So using that is is uh, a really good practice. Um, and just kind of going through the, the, the practice of reading all of the stuff about accessibility on the different platforms in the different ways. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm um, happy to, to uh, go through that as well in terms of uh, things, so. Love it. And Rosie, do you have another question? Uh, no, that's all, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not a coder, so I have to admit that WordPress uh, intimidates the heck out of me. But I've heard that uh, that is the best way. To, it's good to know it's the best way to go. So I'll look into it. And I, I thank you both. Awesome. Love it. Give it a second for any more questions. But otherwise, for Instagram, if you text. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is a whole thing. Um, a social media. Also, hi, Sydney. I went to, I went to high school with Sydney. We did student council. It's really cool to have you here actually. Um, so with social media, the difference between image descriptions and alt text, a lot of people will do image descriptions in their captions, but they won't do alt text in their software. And it's kind of so this is my personal take. It's kind of like jeopardizing accessibility to look more accessible. So if you do include image descriptions, include that in the caption, but always put alt text in the alt text section because that's how software is going to read it. Um, but I mean, also, if you want to include both, go for it because some people do want to know about the image and I'm not going to tell them they shouldn't. I'm not going to deny them that access. So I definitely feel like compromising between the two and having both accessible is your best idea. And then for how in depth it's going to be, uh, that is a personal call. I also don't use a screen reader, so I'm not the best person to ask, but from my research and talking with other people who do use screen readers, um, don't go into excessive detail, but try to get the message across for alt text, then with image description. If it's like a really cool photo, if because photos invoke certain feelings in us, if you can somehow relay that with your words, that's pretty spot on for image descriptions. Thank you for asking. All right. So then if there's no more questions, usually when I say that another question happens, but if there's no more questions, I will let us go. Demons today. <laughs>